Hello guys, I'm Gürkan and this is Late Night Stacks. Today I want to make an update about three COVID-19 vaccine stacks, Novavax, Volneva and CureVac. These vaccine makers are latecomers, but are there any chance for the new players? Now it is time to be careful and not every vaccine stack gonna make 5x like Moderna and BioNTech. Investors are focusing on revenues more than promising efficacy results. We publish more than 30 vaccine videos and you can find them in vaccine playlist. I would like to start with pandemic news, but before we start, please give a like and don't forget to subscribe to our channel. If you have questions or feedback, you can write them down below the video. According to Pfizer board member Gottlieb said that the pandemic could be over in the US by January. Do you think so? How about the rest of the world and important industrial countries in Europe? According to statistics, new cases in Germany hit one of the highest levels namely 50,000 new cases per day since the beginning of the pandemic. What's going on? Despite the relatively high vaccination rate, which is 67% people are fully vaccinated, the country faces another lockdown. I'm living in Germany and many people started to do home office. In addition to this, many companies mandate wearing a FFP2 mask in their workplace. This situation is similar for other European countries such as Netherlands and Austria. The governments are pushing the citizens to get vaccinated instead of hard lockdown like last year. I don't think it will solve the problems because if you get the first primary dose today, you will be immunized against the virus one and a half months later. So partial or even hard lockdown for European countries is on the way. When we look at the world, we see increasing corona cases. Winter is coming and we are probably in the beginning of another wave. This is dangerous for the people all around the world because the more coronavirus spreads, the more chance to modify itself. This means new variants and low vaccine efficacy. That's why vaccination rate and speed is very important to end the pandemic. Long story short, vaccines and vaccine stocks will be a hot topic in the upcoming months. Let's start with Novavax. After inflation concerns and COVID pills from Merck and Pfizer, vaccine stocks got a sell-off, including Moderna and BioNTech. It was not surprising for the Novavax stock because its delays demoralized the investors. After its application to World Health Organization for Emergency Use listing won its first authorization from Indonesia. Recently, the company asked for a meeting with FDA to move forward and get the authorization in the US. I would like to share Q3 earnings conference call highlights of the company. The Serum Institute itself can produce up to 2 billion doses next year and many hundreds of millions per month. This is the best Novavax can do because their manufacturing expertise is better than Moderna. Other facilities will be important for the global supply, but the focus is the Serum Institute of India. They already made tens of millions of doses that are waiting to be shippable. The World Health Organization approval will allow vaccine export to other countries. The first destination will be Indonesia. They applied also to other countries for the emergency using authorization and are very likely to get them soon. Another point was cost of goods. This is very important for the profit margin and valuation of Novavax. The CEO didn't share the information but explained a bit their agreement. Novavax will give the formulation of the vaccine and the Serum Institute will produce and distribute it. They will share the profits very likely to 50-50. They also talked about myocarditis which is rising concern for the mRNA vaccines. The company said that myocarditis is often caused by the viral infections and hasn't identified any safety signals for their vaccine yet. This is not something new but the CEO expects other approvals within weeks not months. I wouldn't comment on this because I have no idea about their working tempo. This is one of the risks of this stock, because every delay causes a 10% share price drop. They emphasized again the importance of the partner Serum Institute and its experience in vaccine production. As you know, they produced 1 billion AstraZeneca jabs previously. I also believe this partnership is one of the best agreements Novavax could do. 
With more than 2 billion doses production capacity and having a price to sales ratio of 2 makes Novax a buy in my opinion. You can get access to our late night stocks portfolio and also the cheat sheet on Patreon. We made similar tables for different industries such as e-commerce, vegan stocks and automotive. You can find the link in the video description. When we come back to Novax, it is a roller coaster ride and you should be patient. By the way, this is not investment advice. Please do your own research before investing. It is good to know what the hedge funds are doing. Recently, they increased their positions and some of them even tripled their stake. On the other hand, short interest is decreasing because investors think that the shares will have more upside potential. We don't see any upgrade or downgrade for months and when the institutions are done with their purchases, very likely to upgrade their expectations. Recently, stock price tried to exceed its 50-day moving average and the next stop will be 200 days moving average. The company made 300 million loss last quarter and has about $2 billion cash. I don't expect a public offering in short term. I think Novax will exceed $300 before Q1 earnings. We may see before but it depends on the market and the news. Let's continue with Volneva. I analyzed also this company previously and you can find it in our vaccine playlist. The stock price is close to its all-time high but what is the reason behind that? Of course, this is not a meme stock and far away from being that. The stock price jumped last month thanks to positive phase 3 results from its COVID-19 vaccine trials. The result was, in short, better than AstraZeneca. This vaccine showed similar efficacy and lower side effects in this study. As you know, this vaccine is a traditional inactivated vaccine. This company has a strategic advantage because this is a French company and France has a significant power in the European Union. After cancelling its contract with the UK, the company was too expensive and the stock price was traded in good hopes. Now the company secured up to 60 million doses of vaccine sale to the European Union. According to agreement, the company will deliver 27 million doses next year and the member states can order up to 33 million doses for 2023 if they want. In the previous Volneva video, we saw that the valuation was concerning. The company had 2.2 billion US dollars market cap and we took its power P ratio 15. In that case, company had to earn 146 million dollars to reach this market cap. Its earnings were 3.8 million dollars before the pandemic and made a loss after that. Net profit margin is a question mark but let's say 25%. This vaccine is better than AstraZeneca so European Union can pay more than they previously paid which was about 2 dollars per shot. I took 3 dollars price per shot. The company had to make $600 million in revenue to generate this net profit. The shares are up so we have to recalculate the earnings and when we do the same, we reach $720 million vaccine revenues. Voldemort will deliver 27 million vaccines next year and to generate this revenue, they have to sell per dose for more than $12 and have a net profit margin of 50%. I don't know the details of the agreement, but in comparison to AstraZeneca prices, these are very high. You can make your own decision with or without taking risk of this uncertainty. Another latecomer is CureVac. We started to analyze this company in May and figured out the valuation was concerning. After disappointing phase 3 trials, the stock price slumped and hit all time low this week. Is it good time to buy the dip? Or better to ask, is it the dip? Let's evaluate the news. The company abandoned its first generation vaccine and started to develop the second one with its partner GSK. In this case, the company can deliver the vaccines under the advanced purchase agreement with the European Union. In other words, no vaccine revenues this year and probably next year. According to preclinical results, the new generation vaccine showed 10x high immune response in comparison to first one. 
They used the unmodified mRNA technology and didn't generate enough immune response. Now they probably changed their technology and started to use modified mRNA technology. BioNTech and Moderna uses the modified mRNA technology and their platform seems very well working. I'm looking forward to seeing the results of the CureVac trials. Recently, the company made a pipeline update and announced that their oncology candidate showed a good immune response at phase 1 trials. This trial is ongoing and the results are expected in a year. News are good but this is only phase 1 trial and the company needs a couple of years to bring this product to the market. If we have a look at the pipeline, we see that other drugs are in the preclinical phase except for rabies. Let me summarize the topics about CureVac. They will probably bring their COVID-19 vaccine to the market earliest by 2023. I'm saying that because their vaccine is still in preclinical phase and the pandemic will be over when they apply for authorization. Not to forget, there will be another COVID-19 variant and this vaccine has to be tested against them. It means extra risk for the company and the success of the vaccine. So the question is what is the fair value for this company? The company isn't profitable that's why we can't calculate the P/E ratio. The valuation based on its competitive advantage and growth potential. When we look at its mRNA rivals Modern and BioNTech, we see that they have more advanced pipelines. Last quarter was a milestone for BioNTech and the made greatest step in the company's history. The competitive advantage of CureVac is its mRNA platform, but the results from the first generation COVID-19 vaccine showed that it should be improved. I would like to wait and see the results from the clinical trials because I can predict the dip and its fair valuation. I would like to share one of my favorite Warren Buffett quote with you. Risk comes from not knowing what you are doing. The rising inflation concerns caused more and more sell-offs and this hit more non-profitable companies. Please leave your comments down below the video. Thanks for watching till the end. Please give a like and don't forget to subscribe. See ya.